We are praying. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you once again. I ask that as we prepare to get started, that your grace will be with us. Lead us, guide us, and teach us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to NHTLH International Training. We are continuing with part three of cholesterol. This section that I'm about to go into is absolutely amazing. This is like one of the sweetest parts. Uh, there is something called um, angiogenesis. Okay? Angiogenesis is where you have the blood vessels, the arteries. They have the ability to regenerate and he heal themselves when placed in the right condition. Um, and I can tell you personally, I have seen it happen with individuals that we have worked with. Um, the evidence is there. I have another um, slide coming up with Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And you will actually see how angiogenesis works. It's an aggressive treatment. It is the most effective treatment. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's no other treatment better than it. Okay? So angiogenesis, you'll get a chance to see how this treatment actually takes full control of the arterial wall, do the repair, the necessary repair that is needed for the arterial wall where healing will spring forth. Um, there's a study called the Adventist Health Study 1. This was done from 1974 to 1988. Uh, it was done by Loma Linder where they took 34,000 Seventh-day Adventists from California and they were 25 years of age and above. One of the things that they walked away from in terms of one of the research information they walked away with was that vegetarians who use nuts at least five times a week reduce their risk for heart disease by 50%. I can tell you, here in Antigua, one of our first elders heard about this study, got so excited, and began eating a bag full of nuts, between one to two bags of nuts, every single day. Now, even though nuts does not have any cholesterol, because of the amount of fat that he was ingesting, it sent a signal to the liver, the liver produced cholesterol, take the cholesterol to make bile, and as a result, ultimately, his cholesterol went up, he developed high cholesterol, and ultimately had a heart attack. I sat with him, counseled him, guided him, showed him that he could have still eaten nuts, but what we recommend is a closed fist upside down instead of the one to two bags that he was consuming. So we share that with him. He has since then completely reversed the heart attack and is doing amazing. I remember, uh, let's see, I remember about six years ago, one of my cousins here in Antigua, she's a nurse, she had a heart attack. She was working at the hospital and I had counseled her and kind of warned her and tell her, you know, cause Please don't work these, these shift hours. Be careful. Watch your diet. I, I spoke to her, but, you know, Cuz wasn't listening. Lo and behold, Cuz had a heart attack. Uh, Sister Nash and I sat with her, put together a, a program for her. Within two weeks' time, she was able to completely reverse the problem she had. Um, I was able to go back to work. You know, um, she refused all of the traditional um, medication. And up to this day, she's doing excellent. You know, she has not had any in issues with it anymore. Again, I can't tell you if she's still plant-based. That, that I can't say. But I can definitely tell you when Sister Nash and I put together that program, we were able to help her, where she was able to completely reverse the problem, no questions at all. So... Let's move right on to our next uh, slide. Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn Jr., back in 1985, 
he did a landmark study. This study was for a period of 11 years, and here's what he found. He wanted to test the effects of whole foods, plant-based diet on people with established coronary disease with little cholesterol, low in medication, or none. The goal was to reduce blood cholesterol level be below 150 milligrams per deciliter. Why below 150? Because based on the Framingham study, individuals with cholesterol level below 150 milligrams per deciliter have never once had a heart attack recorded to date. Okay? Dr. Carl well, started off with 18 patients. Um, in actual, he started off with about, um, I think about 24. If my memory serves me right, he started off with about 24 patients, but after he outlined all of the guidelines and the requirements and the dietary changes for the program, I think six individuals said, see ya, don't want to be ya. <laughs> you know, they decided to leave Dr. Caldwell and try something else. But 18 patients stuck with him. Okay? With the 18 patients that stuck with him, they had a total of 49 different coronary events between the 18. They had angina, bypass surgery, heart attack, stroke, angioplasty. Um, they had numerous health related issues. Let me just take a peek here just to make sure I'm not missing a question someone is asking. Okay, Tony, welcome. Welcome, Tony. I see you. Okay. Um, the average cholesterol of these individuals was 246 milligrams per deciliter. Um, they had clogged arteries. <laughs> they, they were out of control. So some simple instructions he gave them, they were to avoid all oils. No flesh item, no fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, lamb, goat, and animal milk. They're supposed to eliminate all of that. Um, what? <laughs> Initially, he did take out the skim milk and yogurt, but after he saw the research that came back from um, Dr. Oh boy, let me see if I can get his name. He was the one who did the research with the China study. Um, I'm sure I'll get his name before I'm Colin finished. Colin T. Campbell. Yes, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. After Dr. T. Colin Campbell showed the research um, on what a small portion of dairy would have done, immediately uh, Dr. Caldwell Esselstein at that time, he jumped in and removed skim milk and yogurt. Now, here is what he found that took place. Result. 18 patients at the end of the 11 years. One of the patients had one coronary um, event, and the reason for that, in the midst of the program, they strayed for about two years, had an event, and immediately turned around and ran back and stayed on the program. You know, that person wasn't too smart in the beginning, but they were smart enough to get back to Dr. Caldwell to get back on the program. Everyone else... Who, st who stood with Dr. Um, Caldwell Esselstein did not have one, one coronary event, okay? The average cholesterol dropped to 132 milligrams per deciliter um, from following that program. I remember I told you, based on the Framingham study, individuals with cholesterol level below 100 and 50 milligrams per deciliter have never once had a heart attack. Now, I got to share this with you. This one is deep. Um, in one of the country that I visited, um, and, you know, I do extensive tra travel, so in that way, you, you guys, whoever listened, by God's grace, you would not know which country I'm referring to. Um, I had a chance to visit, um, and actually the person seeked me out. This gentleman is not an average person. He is the head of the, the, the you know, like the, you, you know, like the medical board. You know, they have, you have medical board, you have the attorneys, they have their board, and all these different things. Well, he is the president 
of the medical board in that specific country. And he had a heart attack last September. And he decided he was going to come and sit with me. And we sat. And I guided him through. I made some recommendations to him. And, um, you know, he's one of the top attorneys. And so, you know, I, I just made sure, you know, still teach the way we teach. But I was kind of mindful to the fact that depending on how well I dealt with him and the results he have, it will ultimately affect all of the attorneys that he is over. Remember, he is above all of them. The other thing also, too, I got to tell you this. This is amazing. He is a rather young person, but he is also head of the lodge. You, you know, you know, and, you know and, and I was saying, oh, praise the Lord. I see who the Lord sent to me. So he is, he is the head of the lodge. He is the head of the attorney group and, you know, had a heart attack. And lo and behold, I find that he came to me. You know, I, I didn't want to ask him how he heard about me or anything like that. But I just sat him down and, and I just began taking care of him. And I don't ask people how they, how they found out about me. I didn't know who he was at first. But after we began talking um, and I stopped putting certain guidelines down for him, he says, well, you know, that would be hard for me to do. So I said, you know, why is that? He says, well, I'm an attorney. And then he began to tell me what his, his work entailed. And then he says, well, also, too, I'm the president of the lodge. I says, oh, okay. You, you, you know, so I understood. So I said to myself, oh, praise the Lord. I, I see who the Lord put in my hand. So I've, I've been taking my time with him. I'm praise the Lord. You should see the gentleman. He's doing amazing. He, he's supposed to go and do his follow-up this month. And I will give you guys the update. If you guys remind me, when the update comes, I will tell you what the update uh, looks like. But I can definitely tell you, from looking at him, I assure you, he has completely reversed the plaque artery. Um, I can tell you the result that I've had. Normally, anywhere from about two weeks, I can get rid of chest pains. You, you know, and onward, you can start getting full reversal from two weeks up. And remember now, sometimes God will do some miraculous things through you that doesn't normally work the normal way. Like I remember one lady, um, her son was a um, literature evangelist that worked with me, and she had several blocked arteries. And within six months, the Lord unblocked all of the blocked arteries, you, you know, which is unheard of. And at that time, no one, the, the, the physician says there's nothing that can be done. She definitely needs surgery. And lo and, below, lo and behold, within six months, her arteries returned back to that of a child. So one of the things that you'll find is that when you're dealing with spiritual things, there's no way to, uh, to, to kind of guess how the Lord will do it. Sometime he may just let it go to course, which is on an average less than three years, or sometimes he may do it instantaneously. And then the times, he'll do it within a very short period of time, which defies science, okay? Um, so I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, I, I, I got to give you guys some heads up. When we get to cancer, when we're doing the lecture on cancer, I got to give you guys some heads up. Um, I'm working with several advanced stages of cancer as we speak right now. Um, protocols are already put out there in their hands. And I'll tell you something. I'm excited. And Sister Nash, I know we're talking about cholesterol, but do me a favor. You, you, you were so excited. You were jumping for joy. Give us that quick praise report that the Lord put in your hand um, just recently about the cancer patient that you were working with. If you, you're there. Yes. Uh, could you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so last week I was speaking to a client 
and um, she called actually to give me an update because she had a visit with her doctor that day. And uh, three months ago, uh, one morning, I saw a missed call on my phone and um, I said, well, okay, the person would probably call back or I'll catch up with them later. But like about 15 minutes later, the phone rang again and I saw the same number and I answered and this lady, she said um, that she was actually sitting in her doctor's office about to go in to see him and she had breast cancer and the doctor had proposed for her to take chemotherapy which she did not feel comfortable to take and as she you know the night before she tossed and turned couldn't sleep praying asking God what to do she was not interested in the chemo and um, you, know, you know she felt like this weight on her and uh, as she called and asked you know is there another way uh, could you help um, by you know what we do and uh, I said well yes you know we have helped individuals with cancer to reverse it and yes you can get help so she um, was just praising the Lord at the time and thankful and she felt so relieved and was definite about what she was going to tell her doctor no chemo and within a, about a few days uh, she came to see me and we had a full consultation and uh, gave her um, all the recommendations and the supplements and so forth and uh, she went to work with it. One of the things that I did recommend is that she be anointed. I said, have you been anointed yet? And she said, no. I said, okay, well, organize that with your pastor and get it done. That she did in the following week and continued with a prayer chain, praying three times a day. And uh, she said, you know, every day she'd put some oil on the breast and pray herself. And uh, so it's now um, three months later and she returned to the medical facility. And the original doctor was not there, so there was somebody else. And as he read her files, he saw she refused to take chemotherapy. So he looked at her and he said, well, why are you here? And she said, well, I was told to come back in three months, you know, for a checkup and to see how I was doing. So the, um, the doctor said, well, okay, what have you been doing? And she started to explain to him all these natural um, remedies that she was applying. He didn't seem too interested and he said, okay, let's have an examination. And as he proceeded to examine her, he kept, you know, um, palpitating looking and um, for the lump, but there was no lump in the breast. And he said, well, according to the, um, the report, there should be a lump here, and, uh, uh, but there isn't. And uh, then he sat down and he said, tell me, what are you doing? And uh, she started to explain. He said, could you write it down for me, please? And the nurse was like, what is your diet like? Is it expensive? And, you know, she was just like praising the Lord uh, for his miraculous healing. And, um, you know, and she, and they told her to come back in the next three months for an ultrasound. But she's already, you know, uh, happy and have her testimony to share. Man, sister, that just listening to you want to make me just like jump and give God praise for that, man. Yeah. You know, that's a powerful testimony. And I want to let you know, just like how God did it for that specific young lady, he can actually do it for individuals with coronary artery diseases. So don't ever think that is beyond you. Sister Nat, I think I'm getting an echo back from you. Okay, perfect. It's gone. So don't, don't ever think that God can't do this for you. Um, and like I'll give you an example. I'm working with a lung cancer patient right now, and it's an end-stage lung cancer patient. And this person has been a Seventh-day Adventist for 57 years. So one, the very first thing I said to him, you know, I said, Elder, let me ask you a personal question. Have you been anointed yet? He says, no, I have not. I said, Elder, we've got to get you anointed. I said, you know, let's get the heart ready, prepare the heart. 
Um, I asked him a few questions. I went to a book called Ministry of Healing. I'm sure everyone on this line is familiar with that book. If you are not, you send me a me send me a message, and I'll send you out a PDF copy. I'll put a PDF copy in the group that you guys can have access. So, Sister Nash, maybe you can put it out there while we're speaking right now. And I went to the chapter called Prayer for the Sick. And I got to tell you this, you know, I I'm helping him. His son is by his side. His daughter-in-law is by his side. His wife is by his side. And, I'm, you know, I'm asking Dad some hard questions. I'm like, Dad, have you made things right for the Holy God? Um, should death take you? Have you said everything that you need to say? And there's a total silence on the phone because I don't think that no one was prepared for me to say, should death take that? And that's why anytime you're doing consultation with individuals where there's a possibility of death, you need to read that chapter, Prayer for the Sick. You need to read it personally so you understand it, and you also need to read it to the guests that you're assisting that they understand that not all the, the, not all the sick are raised up again. And let me tell you something. After I sh shared that with Pops and the family, the son said to me, he says, Brother Luke, all my life in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I've never read that book. I've heard people mention the book, but I've never read it. But that chapter was an eye-opener. And, you know, so I gave them a couple of days to contemplate and what was written. And then we went back and we began doing the consultation. At that time, now, Dad was ready for the consultation because you got to get dad mentally ready, emotionally, physically ready for what you're going to do. And you need to let him know that not all the, the sick will be raised. However, we need to work as if your faith is invincible and, you know, assume that there's a possibility that God will raise us up. Okay. So, um, so as we began working now, that dad began working with a clear conscience, with a peace of mind, knowing that there's a possibility that God can raise him up and he has to fight just like how Joshua did. Even though Joshua was promised the victory, it is said um, in the writings that Joshua fought as if the victory was not promised to him. Okay, so I thought I'd put that out there while dealing with this. Let's go on. This physician here um, that I'm about to share with you is 44 years of age. He had a heart attack. Um, he was a, a physician that um, he, he dealt with cardiovascular diseases. He actually worked um, with Dr. Caldwell Esselstein. He was pretty close. They, they, they worked at the same hospital pretty much across from each other. And so he would monitor and see everything that Dr. Caldwell Esselstein was doing. So when he had his heart attack, he immediately just walked over to Dr. Caldwell Esselstein and just continued to review the materials that Dr. Caldwell was utilizing. And he decided that there was nothing that conventional medicine could do for him. So guess what he did? He got on the plan. He got on the program. He changed his diet, changed his lifestyle. And I, I got to show you. What was amazing with him is that his cholesterol wasn't that bad. You know, he decided not to use any cholesterol or medication, but his cholesterol was not that bad. His cholesterol was 89, uh, um, 153 milligrams per deciliter. So listen to that, 153 milligrams per deciliter. I didn't put that in the slide. Um, so it was just like three points above 150, but he still had the heart attack. Here's the great news. He decided to go, um, go on the diet, dietary plan. He changed his diet, and in 32 months, his blood cholesterol dropped to 89 milligrams per deciliter. He completely reversed the heart disease, okay? Completely reversed the heart disease. And you know what they say. They said a picture is worth what? A thousand words? Okay, so look right here. A, right there, A, this is what his, um, his arterial wall looks like um, with the, when he got the heart attack. Look at there. There's virtually no blood vessel here, completely eaten away 
by um, you could say decay of um, the blood vessel based on his lifestyle. And remember I told you guys about angiogenesis? Now let's go over to B. You know those phytochemicals, those antioxidants, um, the, the, the omega 369s that helps to repair the endothelium, the inner lining of the blood vessel? Look what happens in less than 32 months, in less than three years. Watch that. You see how here was all rotten out here, virtually non-existent? Look how nice and fat and plump. Remember between here, look so rotten out again? Look again how it began to just grow back nice and plump again. This is what angiogenesis is all about. This is by far one of the most aggressive treatment that you can do in terms of lifestyle medicine. Um, it, it, it is targeted, it is aggressive, and it actually works. Okay? So one of the things that you'll find is that we are told that as we approach the end of time, You'll see sickness in mass. It's a, we're told that there'll be a lot of people in the world that'll be sick. And it says also in the church, they, they, they'll be in the church too. But in the world, there'll be even more. So one of the things that you'll find as you gain understanding in dealing with coronary heart disease, because this is the number one killer worldwide, you gain understanding. You're able to put people on the plan. By God's grace, you're able to reverse these coronary artery diseases with ease, without any problem at all. It's by far the easiest thing to do, especially if you're using lifestyle, um, lifestyle uh, uh, program um, that is highly effective, that is proven, and you're sure to get the results by God's grace. I, I see there's possibility of a few questions here. Let me just make sure there's nothing that I need to address. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, Sister Antoinette, uh, Sister Ingrid, and Brother Tony. We give God praise, you know. I give God praise that um, when Sister Nash was called, Sister Nash was able to give godly counsel to that young lady and bless God that the healing sprung forth. It didn't take long, you, you know, within three months, you know, when she went back for the follow-up, you, you know. And, uh, you know, I give God praise for that physician, too. That physician was wise enough that he, when he realized that there was healing, he says, hey, what did you do? He says, do me a favor, write out the protocol. You, you know, I, I remember Sister Nash and I were talking. I called her one morning and I asked her what she was doing. She was actually writing out the protocol to send back to the lady that the lady can take into the physician uh, and praise God that, I'm sure she was able to get that protocol that he can utilize it. But the thing about it, what he doesn't realize is that Sister Nash has multiple protocols depending on the type of breast cancer. Um, because we have hormonal breast cancer, we have non-hormonal breast cancer. So it all depends on the type of breast cancer. The protocol varies slightly if it's hormonal or non-hormonal. Um, let's continue right here. We're going back to coronary heart disease. It says here, grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These foods prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. It is man's best food. Now, if I came to your home, this internet, if I came to your home and the pipe is running and there's a stopper in the sink, and the water is flowing out of the sink onto the ground. Should I grab a mop and start mopping up? Or what should I do, Brother Tony? Well, praise the Lord. You got to turn off the faucet first. After you turn off the pipe, you unplug the sink. And after you unplug the sink, we're going to mop it up. We're going to take our time. And in a systematic manner, we're going to take this approach by God's grace. So let's go right ahead. How do you turn off the faucet? Remember this. Eliminate all flesh foods and their byproduct. No fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, uh, you know, lamb, goat, and animal milk. You, you know, the other day I was doing a lecture and someone came up and said, Brother Luke, you missed the goat. So if you find that there's a, a goat in it now, that's because the person said, I missed the goat. So after the lamb, I had to stick the goat in. Amen. 
Um, so eliminate all dairy products. Eliminate all fried foods. All highly processed foods. Eliminate all oils from your diet. What we found is that if there's any oil in the diet, be it olive oil, be it coconut oil, or any form of oil in the diet, it actually damages the inner lining of the blood vessels, the endothelium. It damages it. So you'll find that the restaurant that we utilize here in Antigua, one of the things that Sister Nash and I have put together along with um, Claudia, we do not utilize no oil in our preparation of items. Um, we do have something called like a tower, um, which is what the uh, Trinidadians used to do roti. We'll, we have to oil that, you know, so we'll wipe it to make sure it's properly oiled down because if you don't oil that, the, the heat will cause the, the cast iron to just brittle up and break up. So you gotta put, you gotta wipe it. So there's no visible oil to run off or anything like that. But anytime we use the tower, we'll wipe it with oil. And after we finish use it and wash it, we make sure we keep it oiled. So in that way, it doesn't rust on us. Um, but that would be the only oil that we are utilizing in the cooking. Um, I think the other day, I think they told me that they used some, they, they had used some oil for something else too, like some potatoes. And I told them, hey, absolutely no oil in food preparation. So um, the last time I checked, they had stopped that too. So there's absolutely no oil in our preparation of foods at all. Um, eliminate yeah. sugar. Yes, please. Yeah, before you continue, could I talk about um, the byproducts? Of course, Sister Nash. Jump right in. Okay, because I have a story to tell. Um, it, it, how long is it? About 15 years ago. Sister Nash, take your time and speak, please. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> take your time. Yeah. We can do a part four. Amen. Okay. Um, about 15 years ago, uh, my dad um, actually had a heart attack. And uh, he was only 66 years at the time. And uh, for 32 of the latter part of those years, uh, he was quote unquote vegetarian. And uh, in, to him, it, being vegetarian meant that he would eat no flesh foods, no chicken, no sardines, no sausages, or those, you know, uh, no, no flesh food. And um, however, he would eat uh, the cheese, butter the, from animal butter, and uh, the milk, full cream milk, powdered milk, and uh, ice cream, you know, cakes, and so any the byproducts of these animals that he would consume, but not eat the flesh itself. And to him, that was what vegetarianism meant, and. Uh, However, here 32 years later, and by the way, he would have lots of fruits and lots of vegetables and, um, you know, the rice and the beans and so forth. Uh, pretty active, um, working still, and so Friday evening, park the vehicle, Sabbath all day at church, and this was the Sunday, um, about 11, he had a heart attack. And uh, so the family took him to the hospital. And um, in about eight hours' time, with you know the, the doctor's intervention and so forth, he had a second heart attack, and that was even worse than the first, it, because it burst the pericardium, which is the sac around the heart itself, and uh, so he died. And uh, you know when that happened, the, the entire family was shaken as to what could cause this and as we started to uh, investigate and um, you know and to look we recognized that the food definitely had an impact so I tell folks that though you're not eating the flesh if you're eating the byproducts of these things eggs included if you're eating the byproducts it bites just the same it does the same destructive work on the body and it's just like a tap dripping, dripping, filling that bucket 
but at, you know it, it's going to top up one day. The arteries were all clogged when the autopsy was done. Um, the four arteries, and especially that one leading to the heart, and it was just like nothing could be done. And in lots of times we think about, you know, what if the doctors had done something different, you know, if they'd moved earlier, if he had moved earlier, because um, three days prior, he felt that chest pain, you know, my sister recognized he was had his hand, hand on his chest, he felt the pain, but did nothing. Um, had he gone, maybe that could have been done. Um, one year to the date, um, before that, he actually had an incident, um, that, which was a mild heart attack, and had a doctor's visit, uh, which confirmed that. And the doctor casually put on the paper, which I found um, just about about two or three years ago, um, pleasant chap, you know, high cholesterol level, see dietitian, full stop. You know, not raising an alarm, to say, you know, this is a serious thing, you're on the road to a heart attack, um, so something bigger, you've got to make changes. And so thinking that he's vegetarian just continued. And another thing that um, we used to do uh, was to have ice cream once a week, every Friday evening as a treat, you're winding down, stop by the ice cream parlor and have an ice cream cone. And uh, that would just, um, you know, create and cause that calcium plaque to build up in the arteries tremendously. And uh, so these are items to stay away from. You're reversing uh, high blood cholesterol, uh, blood pressure, diabetes, stay away from these things. You're even preventing. So if you're on the path of prevention, you need to uh, you know, avoid and eliminate these food items from the diet. Okay, amen, amen. Sister Nash, thank you for the testimony, dear. Um, I know it was a sad situation. I know when you tell that story, you know, it's like, wow, you know. Um, but one of the things I realized is that many times God will give us these powerful testimonies that if God's children would heed the counsel, um, it can actually save many other lives. Um, there is something else I want to add to. Um, Sister Nash, I don't know if you saw this article, but Brother Kelly and I were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, in Jamaica, there's, there's some research individuals that are doing research right now, and there's a gentleman who actually was telling the, the, the people of Jamaica, he's a Jamaican, and he's telling them, hey, you see all this spring water that we have here in Jamaica? is not a good water to drink. And what he did, he said that what they did, they examined, like let's say a hundred people came with kidney stones, they actually examined about, they examined all a hundred, but they also um, checked to find out um, what these individuals had in common. And every, almost every one of the individuals who was suffering with the kidney stones, they all, what they had in common is that they were drinking the, the pipe water, the spring water there in Jamaica, which is very, very high in minerals, specifically calcium. Well, there's a reason why I'm talking about that. Because one of the things that you'll find that causes coronary heart disease, because coronary heart disease is one of the biggest killer in Jamaica. Why is coronary heart disease one of the biggest killer in Jamaica? Not only because of dietary items, not, be, not only because of how they eat in terms of the flesh items, but also depending on the type of water they drink. You, you know, I'll give you an example. That's why Sister White says we should drink pure, soft water. If you are one that drinks the, the alkaline water or spring water, you know, like over in Dominica and St. Lucia and St. Vincent, where they have all these natural springs and stuff like that, people are more likely to drink the natural spring water and think they're doing good when technically 
they are not doing good because of the high mineral content, specifically calcium, that causes calcification of the arterial wall that would lead to a block artery and ultimately cause a heart attack or a stroke. So just to give you some heads up, the type of water that you should be drinking is pure soft water. Pure soft water, what is that? Rain water. Um, I found in doing some simple research, some simple tests, uh, I, and I actually have my tester here, Brother Farley, when I was in Barbados, Brother Farley went ahead, you know, Brother Farley's into all different types of technology. Brother Farley went ahead and he got two of these um, water testers for us. As a matter of fact, yesterday at the store, I was testing the, the, the water that I sell. I tested them before, but I was testing them again um, in front of the staff, basically showing them how to test particles per million, uh, whether or not the water is clean, as well as to test the pH to determine if it's hard or soft. So I just want to give you guys some heads up and just say, just be mindful, the water that I found to be best in all of the testing that I have done, um, there's a water that comes out of Trinidad. Um, it's called Blue Water. And I want to tell you, I am not here doing no promotion for the company per se. I'm just telling you because we did a test on the water. Um, we, the, the blue water, not the one that says alkaline, just the plain sheet blue water. And that had the pH that came in at about 5.5. Pretty much the same as rain water. Okay? So I want to tell you, if you're out there looking for water, consider doing your testing, trying to make sure that the water is between like, you want it less than 7, but no lower than 5.5. So between 5.5 um, and 7, which would make it um, acid rain or acid water, that would work wonders because then um, it will not uh, uh, calcify in your arterial wall. It will not leave any deposits of calcium in your artery. I, I see this possibility of a question here. Let me just make sure. Okay, that's Tony, dear. You know, Tony's in Trinidad. So Tony's happy to hear that the blue water is, is one of the best water that I've ever seen. Uh, so remove anything that is processed, like white rice, white bread, white flour. Anything white has to go. You got to remove all wheat and the byproduct um, unless it says organic or non-GMO. If it does not say organic or non-GMO, it has to be removed because what we found, the modern wheat is genetically modified and it will raise the LDL particles in your bloodstream and ultimately cause blockage of the arterial wall. Another thing too, we found that two slices of the modern wheat, whole wheat bread, will raise your blood sugar level higher than two tablespoons of sugar. So you want to make sure that under no circumstances you eat any bread, bun, tart, biscuit, cracker, any of those modern wheat, if you're, if you, 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 you're using the flour and it does not say organic or non-GMO, my recommendation, leave it alone because the, 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 it will cause an elevation in the LDL particles and ultimately lead to blockage of the arterial wall. Let's see here. Let's go on. Question number 22. How do you turn off the faucet Okay, how do you turn off the faucet? And this is diet related. You got to increase your fiber rich food. So we're going to eat whole plant foods eaten whole. Increase all forms of beans. As a matter of fact, we are told fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These foods prepared in as simple and natural a manner as possible are the most helpful and nourishing. Use lots of string beans, anywhere between three four to one cup daily. Increase your water intake. We found that olives 
tend to work amazingly. As a matter of fact, in the spirit of prophecy, it says that olives can be eaten with good results at every meal. I remember I was talking to Dr. Ber um, Dr. Um, Bernell. Baldwin. Dr. Baldwin. Thank you, Sister Nash. Dr. Baldwin. I was speaking to Dr. Baldwin um, at Wildwood. This was before he passed. And he says, you know, Brother Luke, one of the things that I found, he, found, he, he says that they found that the Italians had some of the cleanest arteries. Okay? That's number one. And he says, what they found is that they found that in olives, there's an antioxidant in olives. And what the antioxidant does, which is amazing, as soon as you eat the olives, it stops the progression of the plaque. Okay, stops the progression of the plaque. And then it removes the plaque from the arterial wall. So one of the things that we do is that individuals who eat with us on a daily basis, you will find that olives are a part of our green salad. And olives are actually neutral. Olives can be eaten with fruits, and olives can be eaten with vegetables, even though olives is a vegetable, even though olives is a fruit. It can be used both sides. So you'll find that on our menu, you'll find that we have olives in our green salad, and the reason being is because we are specifically targeting individuals with coronary um, artery diseases. You'll find that we like to use our green salads too. Why do we use the green salads? The chlorophyll in the green items, that actually helps to repair the endothelium, the inner lining of the blood vessel. So not only does the omega-369 helps with the repair, but the chlorophyll, um, that's the green, that's what's responsible for the green substances in plant. That is also essential in the reversal of coronary artery disease. So now, saints, I'm going to pause right here. And I know the stuff is getting gooder and gooder. And individuals is, is wondering, um, boy, you know, can we just finish it up? But I'm going to pause here because what I realize, I realize that we are in a society that doesn't like le long lectures. Um, most people just want the information within five, two, three minutes or one minute segment and they're gone. So long lectures is not a pop popular thing today. So we're going to pause here and we'll do a part four. So part four, Sister Nash, is going to be Thursday evening. So Thursday evening will be part four of tonight of cholesterol and we will end there with that. So let me stop the recording right